Let me show you how we can use Lightroom's masking tools to add artificial fog to our landscape images. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video and now let's begin. Since I will be showing the whole editing process, I'm going to start with the basic adjustments first. If you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to the exact spot. Now for the basic adjustments. Since this was shot at a rather high ISO and I'm going to apply some quite heavy adjustments, I'm going to head into the details tab first and I wanna click on denoise. As you can see, this will get rid of noise quite efficiently, but it's a little bit too much and we end up with muddy looking shadows in some of these hills on the side. So I'm going to turn down the amount of denoising. Let's go with something like this maybe, should be fine. And then let's click on enhance. All right, with the denoising out of the way, let's go into the basic panel. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape because I want to have some more base saturation for this image. You can also see the landscape profile will help make the darker parts of the landscape a little bit brighter already. So that's great. I also want to work on the white balance right away. Right now you can see a very clear blue color cast, which is not something I want. So I'm going to bring up the temperature quite a bit, introducing more of these nice sunrise colors. And I also think I wanna bring down the tint just a little bit right around here, reducing any magenta color casts in this image. Now we need to fix the darkest parts of the image. I wanna start this by bringing up the exposure very, very gently. I really need to be careful because the exposure will also affect the very bright sky. So I really don't wanna to go too crazy. Something like this should be fine. At the same time, I wanna to tone down the highlights to save the details in the sky, which are quite important to me. So let's bring it down like that. Bringing down the highlights will also reveal more of that yellow color in the sky, which looks beautiful, I think. And then we can further target the darkest parts of the image with the shadows and the blacks sliders. So let's try to restore more details by bringing up the shadows. And let's also bring up the blacks. All right, this is looking much better. Of course, we will lose a bit of contrast doing this, but on the other hand, we just get more visible detail, which is very important here. All right, then I also wanna add a little bit of texture, giving this image more sharpness. I'm also going to bring up the clarity just to give this image a clearer look. And at the same time, I wanna already bring down the dehaze globally so we can get some hazy look applied on top of this, which will later help with the artificial fog we are adding on certain places in this shot. So that's it for the basic adjustments. We can compare the image to before real quick. You can see a huge difference thanks to the white balance and the raised brightness in the darker parts of the image, as we can now see a lot more. Now let's do some masking. I'm going to start with a sky selection mask. However, I don't want to work on the sky. I want to work on the landscape and the foreground. So what I'm going to do is to click on that invert button right here, and this will give me a perfect landscape selection want to make this area brighter. So I'm again starting by raising the exposure. At the same time, I don't want to lose too much contrast. So I'm using the contrast slider to restore a little bit. Also, I wanna bring up the whites, which will further help with the contrast as this will target the brighter areas of the foreground and make them brighter. And finally, let's also add a bit of texture. As we have been targeting all of that landscape in the foreground, we also changed that river flowing through it. And that's a problem because this is already super bright. So I don't really want to change that. That means I'm going to subtract and I'm going to use an objects mask here. Make sure the rectangle mode is selected because this will give you more precise results in my experience. And then I'm just going to draw a rectangle around that bright river. And just like that, we have removed this part from the mask. Okay, then let me create a linear gradient with which I'm going to target the very top of the sky. Here, just wanna bring down the highlights a little more, getting out some more details, some more intense colors as well. What I wanna do as well is to bring down the temperature, introducing some colder tones to the very top of the sky. I just think it looks better this way. I also wanna apply a little bit of light spill in the back of the image. 
or let's call it a glow effect. I'm using a radial gradient. I'm making sure it's covering the whole width of the image. And I'm also making sure I'm placing the center right here in the sky, also overlapping these hills below it. So something like this should be fine. What I'm going to do now is to bring up the blacks, which will, which will add a very subtle, nice glow effect. I'm also going to drop the dehaze, which will make the glow effect stronger. Okay, we could even introduce some colors here using the temperature slider. So let's bring it up a notch. Beautiful. And then I also want to work on the foreground real quick. I'm going to use the object selection. And with this objects mask, I want to target that rock right here in the foreground. I want to make it a little more prominent, kind of like an eye catcher. So here I have selected one face of this rock. I'm going to simply pull up the exposure. Just to have a point of interest right here in the foreground. All right, let's see. Maybe we could also bring up the clarity a bit. Wonderful. Then let me use another objects selection. This time I'm drawing a rectangle around that hill in the near foreground on the right side. Again, we get a wonderful selection for this purpose since I want to give this area a little bit more punch. Therefore, I'm going to bring up the contrast. And why am I doing this? The further back we go into an image, the less contrast there is. That's a great example right here. You can see the hills in the far back are kind of brighter than the hills in the front. And applying more contrast to this hill in the front will give it a more natural look. I actually think I want to pump up the contrast a little more like this. Okay. And now that we have applied the basic mask adjustments, let's take a look at how we can introduce artificial fog. That's really not that bad. One thing you have to keep in mind is you need to think in layers. Just like with that hill right here in the foreground, which I made a little bit darker, I want to use the layers of the image to introduce this fog effect. I want to introduce fog behind this hill. Then I also want to introduce some fog above this village in the center and maybe a little bit in the closer part of that valley right here. Let's start this using a radial gradient. I'm going to start with the most distant fog and I'm going to place that radial gradient right here above that hill. Keep these radial gradients rather thin to have a more natural looking fog effect. I'm going with something like this. To create fog, I'm going to increase the blacks. Let's bring them up quite a bit and then we can also use some negative dehaze to further make this effect stronger. Now you can already spot a problem we are running into right now. Since this radial gradient is overlapping that hill on the left side, it really doesn't look natural. We need to find a way to get rid of this part. Again, we're going to use the object selection. We're going to click on subject, click on select objects, and then I'm going to draw a rectangle around that hill. And just like that, we made it look natural. So let me turn off this one singular mask to see the difference from before to after. Much better. Now we can play around with the radial gradient, just like this, making it, stretching it a little further to get a more natural effect. By the way, if you're not sure if this mask is clean enough, you can always click on show overlay. And there you already see there is some mask left on the left side, which I am going to clean up now. I'm going to click on subtract and I'm choosing the brush brushing over this area of that mask. So that's looking pretty good. Let's continue. Again, I'm using another radial gradient. Now let's add a bit of fog above that village in the center. I think right around here is okay. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to make the fog effect more obvious. This time I want this fog to overlap the hill on the left side, but I don't want to overlap it on the right side. Again, I'm using the subtract tool and subtract an objects mask. Now let's draw a rectangle around that hill on the right side. And just like that, we created the perfect mask. Let's deactivate the overlay. And again, I'm bringing up the blacks first. And then let's also bring down the dehaze to make the fog stronger. As we're using multiple of these radial gradients to introduce fog, we can kind of layer these over each other to create even more natural effects. So that means if I push this radial gradient up a little bit, these two are overlapping each other, 
creating more intense parts of fog where those two are intersecting. That's also very important to keep in mind if you want to create really cool effects. One thing you might notice is the color of the fog might be off a little bit. Like in this case, it's a little bit too warm, I think. So I'm simply going to pull down the temperature, trying to find a good looking color spot. So maybe like this. All right, beautiful. Now let's work our way closer towards the foreground. I'm using another radial gradient. Let's place it right here like this. Again, I need to subtract. Let's choose select object. I'm gonna get rid of that hill on the right side. And I want to use another object selection to get rid of that hill on the left side. Looking good. Again, we can check that through the overlay. Actually, there is a bit of rock selected as well. So I'm going to subtract with the brush and just brush over it. Perfect. Then again, we need to raise the blacks and bring down the dehaze. In this case, I think the radial gradient is a little bit too low. I'm going to drag it up a bit and let's make it a bit thinner, I think. That's looking better. Again, the color is off a bit, making this look too warm. So I'm going to bring down the temperature, maybe even the saturation, but that's looking good. Let's play around with the size for a moment. That's pretty much how we can introduce artificial fog to our images using nothing more than Lightroom masking. Let me turn off all the masks so we can see the difference from before to after. Beautiful. Now that we're done with the masking adjustments, let's also apply some color grading. I'm going through the color mixer real quick. Here I do want to play around with the saturation. I want to bring up the orange tones and the yellow tones for more intense sunset sunrise colors. I'm also going to bring up the green tones a little bit. Okay, and let's turn down blue just to remove that kind of heavy blue color cast. All right, that's looking good. I could also head into the luminance tab, bringing up the green luminance, which will make the crease in the very near foreground just a little bit brighter, giving us a bit more contrast this way. Okay, then let's do some split toning in the color grading tab. Since we're working with a very intense sunrise shot, I want to make the colors even more intense. So let's start with the highlights which we want to make warmer. So let's first set up the hue. I'm aiming for a very warm color tone between red and yellow. And let's bring up the saturation. I want to make it really intense. So I'm going to crank it up quite a bit. Beautiful. Then let's check out the midtones. I think I want to go with a warm color tone for the midtones as well. So right around here. And again, let's bring up the saturation a bit. Okay, of course we want to keep a bit of color contrast, so I'm going to use the shadows. Here I'm going to apply a cold color tone and slightly raise the saturation. And that's it for the split toning. Finally, let's also head down into the calibration tab. As always for my images, what I'm going to do is to bring down the blue primary hue. I just love the effect this has on the image. And then let's bring up the saturation somewhere in here. All right, and that's it for the color grading. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's expand the details panel. Here, I'm always going to apply the same settings. I'm going to bring down the radius, then let's increase the details, add some masking while holding down the Alt key so we can see where the sharpening will be applied, just like this. And then let's increase the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image. All right, so let me know what you think about this fog effect. I hope it will help you with your images. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.